Hi, I want to welcome everyone to our very first episode of Deep Light. Uh, Deep Light is meant to bring you encouragement and hope, as well as insight into what it means to live for Christ, really at all times, but especially during this time of social isolation, of this pandemic. Uh, so we are really excited about the opportunity to help you connect to other members and friends of our church as we just share a bit of our life together as members of PCPC. Tonight, our very first interview is going to be Tommy Obenchain. So, hi, Tommy. Hi, hey, Mark. Good to be with you. I am very excited that uh, you and I are going to have the chance to have this conversation tonight, but also knowing that you're going to help me with these interviews over the weeks to come. So thank you for saying yes to being a part of this, um, this little show that we call Deep Light. Tommy, I want to begin uh, by asking you to tell a little bit about our story and how we first met. Uh, we've known each other a very long time, so just start from the beginning, when we first met, what that's meant in our life together, uh, and share with the people just some of what God's done in your life through PCPC. Yeah, totally. So, Mark, thanks first. It's a real gift to be with you, and I'm excited to all you who are watching to get to share Deep Light together. This is going to be a really fun show, and it's fun to start here. And then think back to when Mark and I met, which was about 17 years ago now. I was just about to be a freshman in high school. I was transitioning schools, and Mark was transitioning cities with his family and had gotten to Dallas not but a few months before that school year started. And so we met in the old high school room, and it was funny thinking about that now because I was like a 14-year-old. And, and how old did I look when we first met? How you you were as handsome as you are now, but you 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 looked about the same as you do now too because your hair your hair is kind of an ever young you know it's like it's it's ever young. Oh, I've never I've never heard somebody describe it that way. It's good to know that I'm growing into my hair, but I've never heard it described as ever young. Thank you. Well, Thank you very much. We're all yeah. You know, it's, it's good. It's good. No, but yeah. So so that was that was that was that was back in 2003 2004. Am I right? right. That was about that's right. A, yeah. Yeah, that's exactly right. That's so cool. Yeah, so so I was about to be a freshman, and then we've gotten to do a lot together since then, which is so cool. We went to New York on the New York mission trips. We've gotten to travel across uh, across the world to Asia together on a couple different couple of different trips. And we've had some really sweet experiences. So I've just treasured our friendship in all of that. But then from there, we've now you did Hannah and I's wedding five years ago, which was so cool. And so you were a part of that in a in a really huge way. And now maybe most remarkably. We're kind of family. Yeah, we are not just in the spiritual sense, like you're my brother in Christ, I'm your brother in Christ, but uh, my oldest child, uh, Kara, who was six years old when you and I met, yeah. six or seven, I guess, um, she's now married to your uh, brother. younger brother, Drew. Uh, they got married in January, at the end of January. Then they actually honeymooned to where, Tommy? To Italy. They went to Italy. <laughs> I know they, they may have been the last American honeymooners in Italy before it this pandemic reason. broke out, which is really, really crazy. And we're glad they're healthy, um, you know, because this obviously is a huge deal. Um, so yeah, speaking is. speaking of travel, um, looking at your shelves, yeah. you, have, uh, you, you have three airplanes that I can count. I don't know how many yeah. books you have on airplanes, but I do know one of the first a things... Couple. One of the first things I learned about you when I we met was that uh, you had a lot of energy, a lot of enthusiasm, and a lot of ideas. And most of those ideas were centered around you not being a pilot, not being a frequent flyer, not being a flight attendant, which I know you you have been in the past, um, and you've been a frequent flyer in the past and present. But you wanted to own an airline. That was that was your dream. I want to own an airline. And so, as you mentioned already, we did travel or have traveled together a lot. Um, but I want you to tell the story of our first trip uh, to yeah. China together and that crazy thing that happened on Jing Li Street that we yeah. then would find out the fruit of uh, at a later date, I think two years later. Yeah. Okay. So, so for y'all who are watching, you can kind of envision Mark and I in China. We, we stand out a little bit, as did really our whole group who, who was there. And we were on Jin Lee Street, which is this really beautiful kind of a, a, a historical site in the center of the city of Chengdu. And we, we were walking, we were just kind of walking around, seeing it and 
stopped because we saw this camera crew that was filming some of the some of what would look like a, a you know the entrance like a gate into the street and we were watching them and all of a sudden the crew kind of stopped and looked at us and asked if we would stand and be filmed by them and they really like they didn't really speak english mark's mandarin is better than mine but well i i put i put the man in mandarin but you, they didn't speak I've always said that. They, they 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 didn't speak a lick of english you know and it was true. a it was a professional crew i mean they had the big boom and um yeah. but the, and they approached us and we're like somehow through some nonverbal exchange we understood them saying we think our video would be much better if the two of you somehow were in it. Isn't that what yeah. you kind of understood? That's, that's, they, that's exactly, without saying it, that's exactly what they said in their eyes. And in it was eyes. awesome. And so we said, absolutely, absolutely, we'll be in your video. And so Mark stood next to you. He was a sorry saying he put his arm around me and I had a backpack on and they just did kind of a sweeping angle shot of us looking up, just kind of smiling absently. And it was it was awesome. Probably the highlight of, of my young life in film and the extent of it. <laughs> yeah, I, I do remember the director uh, moving the cameraman to get ever closer and closer to our faces. And it seemed like 10 minutes of this camera just moving around and they just wanted us to smile. They assumed we, that we really, were a father, a father and son uh, deal. And of course, I am not your father. I love your father, uh, Tom Sr. Um, who also would have been, he would have been great in that video as well if <laughs> yes. if he could have stood still long enough but anyway that's another Quite. interview that's another Different, interview yeah. <laughs> so we had no we had no idea what that video was for and right. no they didn't exchange a number they didn't say for future royalties you know they we had no idea so we wouldn't know if we'd ever see it but now take us two years later when we realized the fruit of of our uh cinema you know moment yeah if you will I mean, that's it that's the way really the fruit of it indeed so that that's what was so we're like walking away from mark and i remember you saying to me who knows where that video will ever end up something like that like it was a great like you know then two years later we're back in china together and we're flying on air china on a 757 for those of you who and we were going from Chengdu to beijing middle of the flight, they're playing the in-flight video on like the old center, like, you know, TV monitors down the aisle. And suddenly the airplane just kind of erupts. Our group of like 40 people is like the majority of the passengers in the party cabin we're in. And that plane just kind of goes nuts. And we're like, what, what's going on? And I was watching another video, Mark, I think you were asleep. I was completely asleep, like a baby. I mean, I was wiped out from the week and I was in a good, good deep rest. <laughs> and we find out that we were just on the in-flight video. And so quickly, if I'm not mistaken, like they, they, we, 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 they almost like rewound it so we could see it again. Like we saw it on the screen. I remember seeing it being like, holy cow, it's the video from Jin Lee Street in Chengdu two years ago. Two years ago. Two years ago. Yeah. Well, we found out that we had been a part of an Air China promotional video that they had played presumably all over the world on their flights. At the very least, we don't know the extent of it. Well, we know that it was um, on every Air China flight uh, from the moment they finished that video until who knows when. It's probably still playing, but you most, like, most likely only in first class. But it certainly uh, was a shock. I was asleep. Everybody started screaming. The flight attendant was kind to play it again, which... I think was weird to all the other people uh, that, <laughs> no that, that spoke English. And all it was, was this beautiful video, kind of a tourism of China. And then it's, we were the only two Westerners faces on the video <laughs> and this kind of bizarre out of context deal. But my, my favorite part was when yeah, Drew Jollish, so Drew Jollish, also Drew. a member of our church, uh, he went to the flight attendant, asked for the DVD so that he could show us again on his laptop. He was also um, able to burn it onto his laptop. Um, I think that's what you kids call it. And as he burned it onto his laptop, we now have a copy of that, which we don't really know where it is right now. But we're gonna we're gonna try to find that. It's uh, kind of it's out there like somewhere. Rainstorm. We're gonna we're gonna try to find yeah. it uh, so we can show it to our viewers um, on Deep Light. I think that would be fun. Well, Tommy, uh, That'd be so. Very fun. 
tell us a little bit about um, just your journey with the Lord. I know PCPC has yeah. been a huge part of that, uh, yeah. even before you and I met. And, and now you are serving our church actually as a deacon, which is obviously a huge blessing to me to see the way the Lord has shaped your life and called you into that office. So just tell us a little bit about your story of rescue and how the Lord has brought you uh, to this place. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, I grew up in a family that I loved and, and they had loved me really well. And so there's, you know, we'd call it like I very much covenant theology is, is a piece of my story and, and, and a piece of, I know so many of you who are watching your story. I grew up in a family that, that I, I never really knew a day without, without the Lord. And I accepted uh, Christ. I believed in Christ. Um, when I was a six year old, I was in first grade, but it's actually so cool. I was in first grade. I was in Carol Chester's first grade class at Providence. And I, I, I love Miss Chester. She was talking that day about missionaries in China. And the Lord just kind of pierced my heart with the story of the gospel and how, how, how the Lord came from heaven to earth. And the gospel itself is the good news that God himself saves sinners. And, and it was, it was piercing to me as a six year old. And so I got in the car after school at carpool and asked my mom like what what like what do I need to do to accept Jesus into my heart and that evening I prayed to accept Christ into my heart with my mom and dad in our kitchen and it was it's so sweet to look back on that now because uh, as as we all know as, as as followers of Christ that was just the beginning and so in in the sweetest sense you know the Lord is the Lord is good because he is faithful and because he's God and in that my story began really early, but what's so sweet is to look at the like wholeness of it because we started going to PCPC when I was in fifth grade, and Mark through through the through the high school and through your entry into my life. You know, one, one of the things that I learned that I uh, yeah that the Lord taught me through PCPC was 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 what grace really meant. So I grew up around a lot of grace most of most of my young life, but I couldn't ever really define it. And and I think at core, uh, and this is something that I really still struggle with to a degree, I treat the gospel like it is, there's some level of my works that matter. Mm. And what is the rich truth of, of who our God is, is that the, uh, yeah, that we're saved, we're, we're saved by faith alone. Our faith is not alone, but we're saved by faith alone. And so understanding grace really for the first time in high school kind of changed probably the trajectory. Oh, it didn't kind of, it totally changed the trajectory. Of, mm. of my life and in that it's yeah my life has been <laughs> like this sounds cute my life's been a story of grace hasn't it and is that true in some sense for for all of us be, because yeah we are we are we are we are we are we are safe and we, we are we are safe and we are mm, we are safe by grace and and so in that pcpc has been huge because of the exposure to truth that it's allowed for me sent from from a young age and then in that um, that has really shaped my thinking. And, and so from there, I went from you know, high school into college in Nashville and got to attend a really cool ministry called All You Up in College that I really loved. And in all of that, the Lord has, the Lord has, been, has been faithful to me in revealing himself to me really entirely by, by his grace. And he's continued to expose my heart to truth in in not just PCPC, but in, yeah, in the bodies that I've been a part of, yeah, through these last, through this last decade of living in Nashville and then being back in Dallas. And then, and then I was uh, traveling for work really often. And, and I'm, I'm just overwhelmed at how the Lord is faithful to us because, because he's our God and we're, we're his children. And that is all indeed a work of grace that is through Christ alone and through faith alone. And then it, it doesn't stand alone because he abides with us and, and in his abiding uh, there's there's fruit and and our abiding is is this great gift of that so it's kind of vague does that do you feel like that kind of answers your question to yeah no i think it's important for all of us to um you know just rehearse our story just the ways in which god has called us to himself and you know over these interviews that's one of the questions i'm going to ask frequently is tell us your story of rescue because every story of rescue no matter how dramatic it might sound to, you know, our human ears, all stories of rescue require the grace of God. Every one of them requires the invisible, behind-the-scenes, powerful work of the Holy Spirit 
and calling us to himself. By God's grace, you know, every story begins. By God's grace, you heard a teacher talk about a missionary in China, which is funny. Um, <laughs> cool. And then he, by God's grace, he gave you the, the um, invitation and the response to irresistible grace and asking your mom, you know, what does this mean? And then you prayed with her, which was a grace in her life too, because it was an yeah. answer to prayer all along. Over the, the weeks to come, as we hear different stories of rescue, there are going to be, there's going to be a variety of moments when people come to Saving Faith. Uh, some will happen later in life, some, you know, like yours. Mine started when I was 15 and a half. And all of those stories reflect God's, God's grace, His initiative. So you're serving uh, in many ways in our church. You've continued to work with our youth ministry. You've gone on many trips. You've, you've yeah. been just a fantastic example of what it means to um, engage for the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I could not be more proud of what the Lord's done uh, in your life and through your life, even as you're ministering to uh, my oldest son and discipling Caden. I, I'm just so very, very grateful for that multiplication that continues through your life. And also this. So one of the reasons I'm interviewing you first, Tommy, is because you're going to help me with this, uh, this little show called Deep Light. Yes. Uh, and <laughs> yeah, I called Tommy just a few weeks ago and said, hey, I've got this idea. Um, would you be willing to jump on board with me? And, uh, and he said, yes, I'd be happy to help any way I can. So thank you for that. Oh, yeah. I'm so excited. Your vision for the show is something that I'm yeah, I'm really, I believe in. That's the bottom line. But I'm really excited for all of y'all who are watching to get to be a part of this with us because this is this is new as this season really has been pretty new at large and in, in response. Meaning, meaning the, yeah, the pandemic we're, we're in that yeah. season because we don't know how many seasons, we don't know how many seasons of Deep Light we're going to have. Um, but, <laughs> well, this is the first. But this is the first and the very first episode. So if you're watching, this is something you can say, I was here when I, I saw the first episode of deep light um let's talk about the show for let's talk yeah. about the show for just a minute what do you want to ask me well I'd, I'd love to hear just your heart for deep light what's yeah do we, will you tell us your heart and kind of your vision for the purpose of deep light what the lord gave you yeah as these weeks have gone on it's obviously very clear people want to connect they want to be together the technology that we have has helped a lot i mean i know most of us are getting by one of the interviews i did uh, earlier this week Russ Whitfield said, I'm zoomed out. You know, I'm just wiped out. <laughs> That's good. And, I love that. I, I get that. But at the same time, it's a great tool for us to be able to stay connected. And more than anything, that's what Deep Light is designed to do, is help us stay connected to one another, to find encouragement and hope in the powerful presence of God in our life, to be reminded of his faithfulness and of his attributes. Uh, Deep Light's designed to help people laugh, um, as well as cry, maybe, and maybe cry because they're laughing so hard. I don't know if that'll happen or not, but it's it's really meant to bring deep encouragement uh, to the the body of PCPC uh, as I interview members and friends of our church. That's it, essentially. We just want this to be a great blessing. Awesome, awesome. I love it. Um, yeah, I'm I'm excited. What do you think? When we talk about the interviews specifically, what can what can people are are uh, those who are watching with us now, those who are going to get to watch at a later point, what can they expect from each interview? I think in most cases, you're going to hear a bit of a story of rescue in their life. Um, you're also going to find, I think, some pretty deep insight uh, that individuals have, things that they're beginning to do in their life or have been doing. Um, we have a, a segment called Habit, Habits, Hobbies, and Hankerings, where I ask people, you know, what's, what's a hobby you have? Or one that's been put on hold. What's a new habit that's forming in your life, or or a new habit that's being exposed, or an old habit that's being exposed? Uh, what's a what's a hankering you have? Something you're craving? It's been fun to ask that question. Uh, people will uh, share a paragraph that's been substantial in their life uh, that God's used in a book that they read at some point. That's been a fun question to ask different people. Uh, but more than anything, you're just going to see the hope that people have in Christ is they're seeking to follow him during this very unique season. Mm, awesome. Awesome. Um, yeah. Awesome. That is fantastic. Okay. So who have you interviewed thus far? Well, we're definitely, like, we're getting into this. Who? Yeah. So I've, I've interviewed a half a dozen people or so and am doing a couple interviews a week. Uh, they're all members or friends of PCPC. Um, 
following this interview, uh, I believe it will be on uh, Monday, um, I will be interviewing Joe Janiszewski. Uh, Joe and Ashley have five children, and he works for the uh, Major League Baseball organization, the Texas Rangers, as their, uh, you know, executive vice president of, of marketing, I think, something like that. And what a fascinating journey he's been on because baseball's not happening. So what's that look like in his life? Yeah. I interviewed Nancy Guthrie, who's a friend of our church, written many books, especially on grief. I think hers will be a two-part interview. She has so much to say so cool. on that subject. I've interviewed uh, Nathaniel Blackburn, member of our church. Uh, Chad Scruggs and I had a half-hour conversation I think you'll be encouraged by, as well as Russ Whitfield. Russ is a pastor in uh, Washington, D.C. of Grace Mosaic. He was one of the original first youth interns here. And then we have a list of about 100 people, uh, a list of about 100 people that over the next many weeks and months, uh, I'm going to be having a Zoom call with like this, most who are members of our church. So that's what you have to look forward to. Each each segment will probably be right around half half an hour, not much beyond that, and sometimes less. So then if I'm a viewer, which I, I'm going to be a viewer, but I'm also with you right now, why why should I watch Deep Light? You've kind of already hit on this, but, but, but give me a little more there. You'll learn new things about people in our body that you worship with. You'll learn new things about how members and friends of this church are, are thriving, um, are seeking to thrive in the midst of this pandemic. And as things return to, to some level of normalcy, um, we'll continue to, to share these stories. I think it's just going to be a new way that we stay connected and learn a lot about one another. I also think it's going to be a venue by which we are able to share, you know, up-to-date information about how our church is responding and announcements of things that I think will be really timely. But we're also, we're also going to, I think, do some segments that are fun. Tommy, you're going to do a few things. Can you give us an example or two yeah. of something you might be bringing <laughs> and deep light's going to be great and i'm excited to be in it with you and i'm so thankful mark for your leadership and just for you and our friendship i admire you deeply and your family and this is going to be fun so for all of you who are watching i'm so excited to be with you here as well on deep light it's going to be great so i've got a couple of ideas for what i want to to to, to do as we get to step in and out of every show so kind of the introduction and then and then and then departing each show as mark said we're going to use the time to indeed be timely, talk about updates, kind of what's going on, what's ahead, what's what's happening within our church. But but as well, I want to highlight great news, good news, great news, things that are fantastic. I love the word fantastic. It comes from the word fan, like a ceiling fan. I, I actually don't think it does. I don't I don't know its etymology, but <laughs> but I love fantastic things. And I in the midst of this pandemic, know that there's so much that is that is good that's around us. And we know in, in the end, what we celebrate the most is the goodness of our God. And so that, in all of it, gives us a lot of reasons to talk about things that are fantastic. But with that, we also just want to highlight what's what's happening in our body, talents that different members of, of our church and, and community have in Dallas. There's a lot of talent in our church, and we see some of it. We don't see all of it. And as one who isn't especially talented in a lot of ways, I love seeing other people's talents because they're fantastic too. So I want to highlight those. That's going to be fun. And then we just want to highlight people who are just being downright awesome, who are, as, as I've heard Nathaniel Blackburn say before, people like to chop wood, people who like to chop wood and carry water, which I like to abbreviate CWCW. You can say it however you like, but chop wood, carrying water, things that are fantastic. We're going to talk about all of that. Really like even, even for today, Things that are fantastic, airplanes. Airplanes are fantastic. Airplanes are something we're not living with right now, which, you know, is kind of good. As someone who flies, like, as much as I can, whether I'm a frequent flyer or I was a flight attendant, I'm not any longer, but I had a really fun run being one. And all of that, airplanes are so cool because they're like the internet of people. They connect us like we've literally never seen in history before. And it's so easy to take it for granted. It's so easy to go get on an airplane. And now we're having to pause on that, right, Mark? We're kind of taking a break from it. I think it gives us an opportunity to appreciate just how special it is that the Lord created lift, which is like the, 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 the physical reality that birds have lived in for like thousands of years, and we've just lived in for the last hundred years, that then allows us to move around the planet exceptionally quickly, not aimlessly, but purposefully to, to connect with others, to share good news, to, to, to be together. I miss airplanes a lot. That's... <laughs> evidenced by all the airplanes you know, around me, you, but they're you know, fantastic. If, if somebody had told me 17 years ago, 
uh, in 2020, you and Tommy are going to do a little thing called Deep Light. And in the very first episode, uh, Tommy gets to talk about anything he wants. What do you think it will be? Uh, I think I, I would have said airplanes. And uh, pretty emphatically. And then I might have said he's going to want to throw in a word like etymology. That was good. I liked how you did that. We did not we did not rehearse this. So um, I'm really, I'm really gra- grateful for you. I know we need to wrap it up. Um, so we hope that you will come back, you know, and, and watch the, the next interview, which is Joe Januszewski. Tommy, any, any parting words that you want to leave with our viewers? I, I want to thank you for watching with us tonight. Uh, thanks for flying with us. Thanks for watching with us. <laughs> We've got the next episode. It's coming up on Monday night. Seven o'clock, Joe JD. It's going to be awesome. If you're a member of our church or if you're watching this just at large and you need anything, please email the deacons at Park City's Prez. We would love to serve you in any way. We really are. We're truly here for you in the midst of this pandemic and just at large. So know that that is true. Know that we so appreciate you tuning in. If you are watching this and think, I know someone else who'd like to watch this. Send them to PCPC, any of our media outlets. That's the YouTube. Our website specifically is a great place to go for updates, both on our response to the coronavirus, but then as well for information on Deep Light and just information on PCPC at large. You can find more info there. If you have any suggestions for things that are fantastic that you see in regular life or that you know about in regular life, send me an email. My email is really easy. It's just Tommy at TommyObenchain.com. Can't forget it. And if you do, you can watch this again. But we're so glad you're here with us. Thanks for watching Deep Light Mark. It's a real gift to be on Deep Light with you. Like I said, I'm overwhelmed with gratitude for your leadership. You're a great leader. And we're so thankful for how you abide in Christ and how you lead all of us as a church body. And I'm deeply thankful for the friend and how oh, the mentor that you are. You're an extraordinary man and we serve an extraordinary God. And we're thankful for the hope of the gospel that we stand in and we broadcast in tonight. This is awesome. Yeah, thanks for watching. We'll see you soon. Have a great night or good morning whenever you're watching.